properties of TF, TFR Aries near infrared spectrum lab. So, which we call it tennis pen. So, this instrument was uh, developed for three by six meter tall with. Yeah, with uh, teams from TFR, from Aries, and uh, Monokia infrared uh, MKIF, you know, Hawaii. So, there are many people involved in this. This project was started, uh, the design, like, initial concept was like discussed into a trial and then slowly it progressed. And in 2019, it was delivered and it was mounted on the 36 meter telescope. So, a lot of people work on this instrument, starting from Aries, like 10, 12 scientists and engineers and students, they work from TFR also, many people work on this and the people from Monarchy Infrared also. So this instrument is, uh, is installed in this uh, telescope. This is 3.6 meter digital optical telescope building. So this is extension building and then there is a main dome and in this main dome, this 3.6 meter DOT is there. And this campus is called Devastal. So Devastal is located is near to Nainthal, 60 kilometers away from this place. That will take two hours to go there, but it's very clean site, uh, low light pollution and the sky is very good. So this, there are currently three telescopes, this 3.6, one meter, this is 1.3 meter, and then this LMT. So LMT, uh, first light, uh, this currently is going on. So most probably when the sky is clear, so this week, this LMT will also start working. So these three facilities are there, and the biggest one is 3.6 currently, and the dot uh, telescope is installed in, in this telescope. And then this, this is top view, 3.6 dome, and then this diastole comes from this temple. This is diastole temple, so the site name is diastole temple. And the altitude is 2450 meters. So, Yeah. So this this is tennis pad, and then this big this one is three point six meter telescope. So this three point six meter telescope first light was done in April two thousand nineteen, and this is first light image taken from the one of the first light images taken from this tennis pad. So this is infrared image, K band image of M fifty three globular cluster. So this tennis pad is very unique instrument. Which covers wavelength range from 0 0.550 nanometer to 2500 nanometer. So from optical to infrared, it covers in a single shot. And it has an imaging capability. It can do imaging of 60 by 60 arc minute arc second square square field. It has circular field. So this is uh, 60 by 60 arc second. So the image quality is optimized for this field of view, but you can have bigger field of view also, like this. But with degraded, not very degraded, but degraded uh, image quality. And then in the spectroscopy, it has two modes. One is closed dispersed, and one is prism mode. So in prism mode, you can have resolution from R equal to 150 to 350. And for closed dispersed mode, you have a resolution of 2750 uh, uh, resolution for 0.5 arc second So these two numbers are for 0.5 arc second slip. If you go for one arc second slip, because if you want to do observation in like high, like field object, you, know, you need to minimize this slit losses. So for this design, you can have in one oxygen slit, you can go up to 1500 resolution. That is enough for any kind of like line identities. So this is optical layout of uh, tennis pair. So this, there are more, uh, four major components, calibration unit, and then there is a four optics, and then a slit viewer and a spectrograph. This is, uh, so light from the telescope will come and will focus here. And then there is a relay. This is called four optics. And the role of this relay to move this uh, light from the telescope, or telescope focal plane to the slit. Uh, 
So the race for Tesco will come to the, this slit and then sit as uh, this slit mirror as a mirror and then in the in the center there is a curve. Uh, and so from this mirror, light can go here and you can do imaging. And through the slit, it will go to the off axis collimator and to the spectrogram. So if you put mirror here, you can do imaging. If you put slit here, you can do spectroscopy. But you can do like you can guide a star on the slit field of view using this also because slit is very narrow, and then you can use other remaining area to do guiding also, guiding and imaging also if you want. And then in spectroscopy, we have two modes: grating and uh, cross disperse and prism mode. So this is in a wheel, so you can rotate and if you want oh, cross disperse, you can rotate and you can have cross disperse prism. Uh, prism. And if you want prism mode, so you can rotate. So there are three, four wheels. One wheel is there. One wheel is uh, here where not all the filters are there. So you can do imaging in different filters starting from R prime to K. And there are narrow band filters also. And then one slip, uh, wheel, uh, wheel is here. So we have variety of slit starting from 0.5 to 2 up to, three, up to 4 also we have. So different size and different breadth slits are there. And on the top of the spectrograph, if you put one mirror, so you can have one calibration unit also. So there is integrating, integrating sphere and uniform sort, source of light. And then there is a camera lens and then you reflect to the telescope of plane with F9 beam. So if you want to have calibration lens, you just put a mirror. So that mirror is also motorized. So you can put mirror and then you can take lens also. So it's very simple and very special design. And so both imaging and spectroscopy can be done. So this is top uh, first uh, of, of part. This is calibration unit. So there's an integrating sphere and then the lenses. And then it will collimate this lens to the telescope of the and this is tennis bed. This blue is crash pad. And in the, this purple part is where this calibration unit is there. So, this front telescope will come. And then there is a mirror like this. So, if, if you put the rays are coming like this, and if you put this mirror, so you can, the light from the calibration lamp can go and go inside the telescope. So in this diagram is very clear. So there is top, uh, this calibration uh, unit is on the top of the uh, spectrogram. And then there is a four optics. So you need to focus, uh, the Tesco focal plane is a bit higher. So you have to make that focal plane to the slit. So this relay optics is there. Then, and also to reduce thermal noise and background noise also, you need to have a cold stop there. So this is uh, four optics. And then from four optics, there is a mirror which will reflect the light to the H1 RG. There are two arrays in this photograph, H1 RG and two H2 RG, RG. So this is Hawaii arrays, so which has sensitivity of 0.4 to 2.5 micron. So this, so yeah, and you have filters in here. So polymeter camera lens are in this thing. So these are optimized for 0.6 micron to and these are uh, main three wheels. So if you view from the top, the light will come and it will go to the slip wheel. So the slip wheel is like that, and this motor is outside the telescope uh, is instrument box, the outside the body of the uh, instrument. And it can rotate this uh, slip wheel. And then this is filter wheel. So around 12 slots are there in this wheel and this is filter wheel and slip wheel. So you can put 12 different slits or filters. And then there are two modes of spectrograph. So these are the two. So there is a wheel and then you have a grill man and then you have a slip. And the details of slits and filters. So we have 12 slots and most of them are occupied like VHK, Y, R, I, bracket gamma. We have narrow band uh, filters also. 
and then there are two blanks and then there is a one phrase loss and then one people in order to align the instrument so these blanks are used for doing uh, like taking the the background for this photograph and in the slip wheel also there are different kind of slips starting from 0.5 of second up to 4 of second so there are two type of slips one is long slip one is uh, short slip the slip length is around this 20 of second this is shorter one and then there are 60 of second slips so since we have two different modes cross disperse and this mode the shorter one you can use for cross disperse mode because they have different orders so if you take long slip it will overlap so it's better is uh, so the short one is for cross disperse and in this mode you can use order like usually uh, there is only one order so it's better to use 50 or something and uh, similarly we have different width also 0.5 of second if the seeing is very good and you want to do like you want to have two times five zero resolution so you, you go for this and then you have different prices based depending on what kind of thing and what what is the image quality and what is the result and then there is a mirror to do imaging and then there are two people uh, imager lenses so these two you have to put to see the uh, m1 mirror and the filters the, the specification of this filter are this starting from 0.6 micron this is center here 0.6 0.7 1 1 1.2 1.6 2.1 2.1 up to 2.2 micro you can do this so narrow and broad and this r and i filters are in sbss system so for calibration you need to know that these filters are within which system so this is sbss and this is monarchia authority system so there are so we can provide reference exact reference for this so this uh, filter system is developed for monarchia authority Specifically, keeping in mind for the OS or water emission here. So, same system we are taking from Monarchy. So, these are the response for this filter. Yeah, so in spectroscopy, you you have cross this cross dispersed prism. So, there are two prisms, and then there is a grating. And because combination of three will create this kind of thing, right? but uh, they will disperse the light in different orders. The top one is longer wavelength from is basically K band, so 2.54 to 1.86, and you go down, it will be blue uh, wavelength. So you can go up to 12 order. So from third order to 12 order, you can cover from optical to infrared. So Resolution is same in all the orders. The wavelength coverage is different in different orders. So this is S2 RG. So 2K by 2K array, and then you have different orders. And similarly, in prism uh, mode, you have single uh, prism, and then there is a mirror. And this one is H, uh, this is wrong. This is H1 RG. Uh, sorry, S2 RG. Mm -hmm. And then then you have a spectrum, a single order spectrum from 0.5 to 2.5 micron. And apart from this, we have one more mechanism. Uh, we can like focus the H1 RG, that spectra array, using this mechanism. So this is called a like uh, it will be connected with a stepper motor, and then you can use this to focus. But this is not about during regular observation. Once it is done. You can use this. If there is any flexor in an instrument, then you can use this to focus the lines. So this is the total view of tensor mounted on the uh, telescope. So this one is crashed at which we have to pull it down because all the optics are an area are inside this crash head. And since this is infrared. We have to like pull it down so that we have very low thermal background. So this whole system is pulled, and then there is a calibration unit which is outside, which is hot, 
and then this is electronic lab or oh, rack where all the electronics are there and then we to mount this instrument we need one frame this is black one is frame and then there is a mounting frame so total weight of this instrument is around two ton because uh, instrument itself is this 150 kg but to balance this big telescope we need to have a two ton instrument so 650 kg this instrument and then there is a 350 kg of mounting plate and then one ton we have put extra weight to balance this telescope because this is uh, on the cat yeah has given you know, focal plane, so we have to balance this telescope. And these are helium lines. So, in uh, to pull this uh, instrument, we have two stage pulling. One, the outer part will pull by helium, helium line by tri pulling, and inside there is a pole mass which is optic. So we pull by liquid nitrogen. So helium tri puller will take away of most of the heat. And the load on this pole mass, which is optic and array, is very low. So you can put helium liquid, oh, liquid nitrogen inside, and it can oh, be there for like full time is very high, like 90 hours. It can move. And all the oh, different, like all the wheels have motors outside, and these motors are connected to this uh, power supply and other transformer. And Arrays also they have controller outside this instrument. So from this controller, they are cable which go to the to this place, and then all the system is connected through optical fiber to the PC down the like ground floor. So this is the meter floor. So all the systems are there, but you can control everything in the uh, observing observing area. So this is mechanical design of uh, triastat of telescope. So this this part you have seen, but inside this there are different wheels and everything. So this is uh, like with red diagram, the lights are coming, and then there is a slit wheel, and through slit wheel if there is a mirror, you focus on the H1 RG, and if there is a slit, it will go down. There is an off axis uh, mirror. And then it will go to the grating wheel, and then from there, you will have camera lenses. And this is S2RG, and you can take images using S2RG. So, a spectrograph error is here, and imaging error is here. And in between imaging error and this, uh, there, uh, there is a filter wheel. And this array can be focused using this motor. And this, all uh, this motor is connected to this place. So these, these are smart motors which are connected to internet, internet and you can control this motor using WTI switch, etc. And this whole system is closed, enclosed in this like silver plate, which is very important. And this is called cryo, like cryo uh, in our uh, cold, cold seal. And then there is a one more seal, which is called radiation seal. Which is that, and then there is a uh, vacuum case. So three layer of poly, uh, like seals are there to minimize the thermal load, thermal load for the internal structures. And then this outer part will be pulled by cryopolar helium, and then and so this is how we pull this whole system. First, we have to vacuum the dry aspect. So we vacuum it to 10 power minus 6 power. And then once it, it is vacuumed, you start cryopuller, which is connected to helium lines. And then using cryopuller, you start pulling this thing. And up to some, uh, so it will pull it down. And then you pour liquid nitrogen inside the instrument. And then it will start pulling the internal like array part also. And to pull this cryo cooler, we need another cooler, which is particular, which is water cooler. So, to, like a lot of sub components are also there to pull it down to this 70 degrees so that thermal background is very good. So, in telescope, if you go up and in the electronic rack, if you see, you can uh, see the uh, temperatures of different parts of the instrument. 
So A, B, C, D. A and B are for arrays, two arrays. C is the old uh, mark, and then D is the outer bar. So this this usually fluctuates, but internal three are more stable. So usually, if you go to the B, you have to check this what other temperature, then only you can operate. And so there are two arrays. Using these two arrays, you can take images. So these arrays are connected via OFC to the observer's room, and then you can control everything through this WPIC. So all the mechanism, mechanism is all the moving parts, which are motors and arrays to take images. They are connected to this WPI switch. So these switches can be operated via browser, which is in PC. So you can control and you can take images. So what is, we usually do every after morning, we close everything using the WPI switch and evening we start, we start. So I will not go into this. Yeah. So this is a GUI of graphic uh, of graphic for users interface. And so these are the parameters which come from the instrument. These are temperature. So you need to notice if there is, there is something wrong. So it will highlight. If something is bad, so it will highlight it as a red. If something is moderate, then it will highlight it as a yellow. And in this condition, everything is green, means everything is good. So all the parameters are from the instrument, like temperatures from the instrument are here. And then these parameters are from the telescope. So this uh, instrument is connected to the telescope also, PCS also. And it can take like socket command and it can take various parameters from the telescope. So these parameters are from the telescope. And this one is for a spectrograph array. And this one is for the major array. So Arpan will go tell in detail about this graphic user interface. So, so it's very easy, very user friendly. And all the parameters like you can move, like all the wheels you can move and you can do the test will be in the Arpan stuff. And so uh, I will go. I will go on to uh, like on the calculation part of this instrument. So there are different things. First, there are two arrays. We have to characterize those two arrays, and then what is the sensitivity? What is the throughput of this instrument? So we have done this using the our calibration. Right? So this is readout. How do you like when we first read out? So this kind of image will come. So this is infrared array, and this is cumulative integration. So you'll have this kind of, and there are four mode of, uh, four mode of uh, like readout. So there are four channels. So this kind of four patterns will come. Then this background is very non-uniform. But once you have one like bias level, you can subtract. Then you will have very uniform distribution. So you take image and then subtract to the other. So you'll have like bias corrected, this like zero layer corrected image. So it's very uniform. And the, they have calculated the gain value for this instrument. So gain, there are three, or two, two arrays, and the H1 array comes, so works in two gain. One is high gain, one is low gain. So these are the gain value. So for low gain is 4.46 Apple per AMU, and for high gain is 1.12 percent And for H1 RB, the gain value is 4.3 percent Similarly, the dark current and red, red, red noise, noise also we have calculated. Dark current is, is very low, is 0.06 plus 1.001 0, 0, 1, and oh, ADU per second. And for different like low gain and high gain, they are different. So this high gain is for like bright sources. So you can do where there is no problem with the like background noise. And then red noise also for S2 RG is. 2.7 for the high gain and for the low gain is 5.3. So if you want to do very sensitive observation, very like field object observation, you go for low gain. And if you want to do like very bright source with better like so you can go for like so the high gain setting also bright sources. And arrays 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 have their like characteristic 
So there, there will be saturation point and then there will be linear range. So this different range will, will provide this man, whole manual in the uh, instrument that we will be this. So the, this, this is the saturation uh, like linear range of this. Uh, so from 2400 to 5000. So all these parameters are like table in this uh, table. So overall capacity for the S2 RG is 37,000. If you do at, like give exposure longer than this is saturated, and then the full capacity for S2 RG in low wind is 6,000, and then uh, S2 RG is 7,000. And as far as image quality and optics concern, so we have taken some like test images, and these are the example of images like in best optimal condition. If you fine tune this instrument with the telescope, you can have this kind of images like 0.5 or second oh, ablation in table. So ablation is but like is the higher limit of this saying. So if saying is better than this. So you can have 0.5 or second. So in these conditions, you can do 0.5 or second, and you will have very less weight loss. And similarly in R band, because we have sensitivity from K to R, so we will have 0.6 R seconds. So this is best. And then from usually what we get around 0.7 to 0.8 R seconds. And most of the time, less than one R second, always for this telescope. And this is uh, the sensitive for, for evasor mode. So this, this is manhood versus error in manhood. So if you plot and you, you take different exposures and Plot manhood versus error. So this is what you will get in different exposure times. So if you expose for 40 minutes, you will have. If if you want to have 10 signal to noise ratio, you can go up to 18.3, 18.4 minutes. So this is for the current system. Like uh, the receptivity is very low. Even though you can go like 18.5 in for 30 minutes. But after 40 minutes, the this curve, yeah, because in K band this thermal background dominates, so it's not linear. After some time, it will go down, so you will not gain much if you are exposing for one hour and then you are exposing two hours because the curve is like this, so you are not going to gain the thermal noise will dominate. But in J band, if there is no problem, it can go like this. And R and I, you will see this same thing because of the image quality issues with you. For so you can go up to 18.5, 18 mentor in one hour very easily. And in J band, you can go up to for 10 signal to noise ratio, 20.5 or 10 mentor. And R I also is very good for doing image motion. So this is typical spectra when we take in cross because this is R band, different orders. So this is K band up to R band. And if you extract, these are new lamp. And if you take uh, like extract the given, so you'll find in all the orders you have certain number of lines. So this is the example spectra. So we have taken during our test net, we have taken a spectra of a whole spread stars because they are very broad emission features. So you can see where this nodes are emission features of this In all orders, you can see this kind of broad emission features. So this uh, this is proven that uh, because uh, this initially this uh, instrument was designed for, for 0.8 to 2.5 micron, but we pushed to towards so the valent also up to 0.6 micron. And in this, you can easily say up to 0.55 micron, you can do spectroscopy. Although the sensitivity is higher in this upper part and lower in this part. And this is the sample spectra in prism mode. So if you take a R spectra, you have this kind of feature, single order. And you have lines in all from starting from 2.4 to 2.5 up to 0.6 micron. And this is this the spectra of uh, F type HR, B215.42. 
So this is this vector and these are the atmospheric lines. And this is thermal background, this is K band, and then we'll have all this vector. So for uh, this is thermal like high thermal background, but it's it can be like removed if you take proper sky surface. So throughput. So it has this instrument has a very wide wavelength of it, starting from 0.6 to 0.5. So throughput is different in different wavelengths. So we have uh, calculated this throughput using the transmitty and the captivity of different part, optical parts in this instrument. So this is what we have got. So in the best one is Y and J, starting from R to K band. So this 0.6 to 2.2 micron. So in slit viewer. You can go up to 58.58 percent so forth. So it's very good for a, a like slit wear which are inside the core apex. And then cross dispersed mode. This is including telescope optics also. I want you to instrument. And then 29 percent for cross dispersed mode and 48 percent for phase mode. So so that's why you can do like. For at least uh, phase mode and imaging, you can go very deep. Right. So, if you want to do end of layer spectroscopy, okay. phase mode, even cross dispersed 29% is very good. So, you can do spectroscopy of very different sources also. So, this is resolution of uh, cross for the cross dispersed mode in different orders. So, this is K band. Then J, oh, H, then J, then R, and O, oh, sort of way. So, resolution mean, medium resolution is around 2750 for different orders. And then, if you take one half second slip, this is for 0.5 half second slip. For one half second slip, the resolution is around 1500 or 1550. Similarly, for phase mode, this is for 0.5 half second slip. So, you have Better resolution as compared to one second slip. So, depending on your time goal, your the brightness of your source, you can choose whatever combination you want to do for this spectroscopy. And these are the sensitivity curve. So, these are exposure time versus R band of main two for a signal to noise ratio of 10. If you want to have signal to noise ratio of 10 for 0.5 half second or one half second slip. What exposure is should you give for different magnitude? So, for uh, in R band, if you want to do a spectroscopy of 15 magnitude distance, you have to give around around 18 minutes of exposure or 16 minutes of exposure for a signal to noise ratio of 10. So these curves are they uh, will probably soon in our web page also. So you can use this and also we'll generate on exposure time generator based on these calculations. And similarly, for signal to noise ratio, also SNR versus exposure time. So, what uh, SNR you need for a fixed magnitude? So, this will, this curve will go like this. So, more or less is uh, like similar to the third curve. And based on this curve, you can calculate the exposure time needed for your target for different things. Yeah, so uh, I'll demonstrate some other sample images taken from this instrument during our test night. So this already oh, Professor Oja has shown. So this is what like you go from smaller telescope to bigger telescope is better, better saying. So what you will gain. So this is the image. You can see there are various unresolved stars in the center, but in this you can draw all this using cancer. So it's very good for like crowded region or uh, if you want to look for a very strange place. Because you can let to know a space over this. Also, this site is very good, like you can have 25 or 75 or 70 images. So, this is mosaic image. Field of view of a uh, time span is one by one half, half second square. Uh, one by one half. So, we have taken four or five things. So, background subtraction and everything is very stable, very, very good for 10 square. It's very linear. And this is some sample images of the different galaxies and global clusters. So these are different galaxies, color composite in the k -band. Yeah, these are some sample spectra of different spectral types. 
So we have we have known several types of class, so we can like progress and then progression calibration and other like a special classification this library can be used. So this this is all time and various lines, record gamma series, bracket series, fashion series, everything you can see very close. And no relation also from broad discussion you can see that. Yeah, so these are the main parameters of a time spread instrument. Random coverage is from 0.55 to 2.5 micron. The resolution you can get, get around 2.50 because the first and increase mode 100 to 400 depending on the wavelength. And even we do the filters, so very low. Data scale is 0.25 half second per picture. So if you have that's it, so 0.5 half second scene, then also you have very good sensei. And then throughput is 30, 48, and 58 in first dispersed wave mode and energy. And sensitivity, so this is typical sensitivity for 0.5 for 90 percent test of reflectivity, one hour exposure, one half second. Period. So these numbers are for one half second sleep in one hour exposure. What will the sensitivity for for a signal to noise ratio of 10? So for cause dispersed in R band, you can go up to reach up to 15.7, and in J band, you can go up to 17.7. So if the in with the resolution to 750 is very good. So you can do a lot of spectral And in HNK also 1697. So but this is for ideal like 90% receptivity and the split loss is zero. And grill mode also, you can go 17 in R band and in J band is around 90. And then HNK you can go up to 17. Measuring also for in one hour exposure, you can go where it is in 18.3 or 19.5 or 20.5 in years. So these are all numbers are now more or less uh, good. And you can like uh, you can believe these numbers and you can give for the for the for the years. Yeah, so Thanks, and they are, this, was, this, is, this was a big project, and recently it was completed, and many people are more interested in big project also. So it started from DAE to DSP, and then various people who are involved in this. Yeah, thanks. So all the like information about this instrument is there in the 316 instrument page. So we'll update time to time. So this timeline, tutorial, all the parameters, exposure time calculator, everything will be there in this okay. And also feel free to contact any of us like who are coordinating our funding or anybody. And from the FR also so feel free. Yeah. So if you have any queries, I will go on for the how to do order and we'll connect to it. Yes. Yeah, nice work, uh, Saurabh. So if I need to give a one hour integration, what is the recommended uh, um, largest exposure time uh, for any screen? Yeah, the laser frame will be uh, like quarter period, like uh, 20 seconds, 30 seconds you can give. For J and H, you can go up to 50 seconds, but in K, the shorter in mode, you can give around 20 seconds. Otherwise, there will be high turn on the ground. And so, give it as you what do you can like add together all these things? And it's the same for the spectroscopy also? Spectroscopy, you can give uh, like larger, it, it's around two, 150 seconds. 150 seconds, yeah. three minutes. Yeah, and uh, uh, if you're guiding is possible, how is the guiding done? Yeah, how guide, how? yeah. So this will be under, uh, upon we tell uh, more, the guiding, Currently, this telescope is guided by the telescope guidance, so like telescope, uh, because you give shorter exposure and you have to give that. So we are not going, like currently we are, this guiding part is not uh, like ready, but we are working on it. But since you have to do that, and so you can give out to five minutes very easily in using this telescope. 
revenue because the scope revenue is good for like five services. Yeah. So in Telstra we have inbuilt riders, so we are working on it. So most of it will be raised by next so many seconds. But overhead will be higher because you point to some source and then right that is Ita and then go to Ita then come here. So usually what happens like the like if you want to do front of it, so you want to give like two, three minutes or five minutes or four in that so that you will have trace of this structure. So four five minutes the this is trace of or tracking is good if the pointing is good. What happened earlier? There was pointing issue. So if you have like very good pointing model, then the scope is good for all the altitude. So first we have to fine tune your our instrument, then getting good. Question: uh, What is the present mode? Uh, uh, will it be available in, in the upcoming cycle? It's available now also. Okay. Yeah. And since now. Last season also it was available, and this cycle also is available. In the first cycle it was not available. Wheel or wheel was not available. So the plate scale uh, in spec five also not give you trouble for basing conditions like multiple. Yeah, point four five we have. Got like there is better plate scale of PKM with 0.17, so but but the best we have got is 0.45. Yeah, yeah but 0.4 is like if you understand what scale will not be problem for best screen time. I don't think so because 0.45 you are getting 1.8 on the sample is 0.4 on the side. Yeah, so usually, like this is the best number we got. Usually, we get like 0 0.7, 0 0.8 throughout the season. And that is the for, for observation, you have to fight in your like uh, observatory condition. Like, you have to start the trance in the evening. You have to focus your instrument very good and pointing model should be good because this is also as much as so they need very good pointing models to track. Otherwise, there will be large errors everywhere. And then there are this this is related to image quality also because active optics. Mm. Pointing is wrong, active optics will also be like a lot of everything. So everything has to be very like fine-tuned. Very good. Okay, so we'll proceed to our next part. So how to do observations and how to reduce the data. So Urban is expert in that. We'll see. Because he has done a lot of observations there in the Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Marpan and thank you uh, to all the faculty members for giving me this opportunity. So, okay, right? Javed? Uh, so now I will be talking about how to observe with TenSpec, both how to do imaging and how to do spectroscopy. So, so this will be the brief outline of my talk about how 
uh, what will be the best weather conditions and how to configure the telescope and then the band spec instrument and software. And I will sign off with giving a live demonstration of taking some uh, calibration lamp spectra and then the hands on session with the data reduction. Next slide. And this is the one picture uh, taken by Javed uh, during the evening um, when, as the time spec is getting ready. So, uh, as the telescope is getting ready for the observations, so and here is the instrument, the time spec, and the, and the ground floor. Um, it has been put to set up for the observations. And alongside, you can see the a spec mounted on the 3.6 meter at the back end, and we are opening the dome during the evening for observations. So, so these are the brief with uh, uh, criteria for the observation observing conditions which you have to keep in mind before opening the telescope and before starting the observations. The humidity should be less than 80 percent, and the wind speed will be should be less than two to three uh, meter per second, and also there should not be any sky uh, clouds in the sky. And for all these, you can check uh, in the weather station. The link is provided there. Yeah, and uh, one of the important thing is that there are several exhaust fans are there. Make sure ask the operators out there before you start the observations that all the fans are kept on. It is um, necessary so that the temperature there is no temperature gradient within um, between the uh, outside conditions and the, and the conditions within the telescope dome because if there is some weather te uh, temperature difference it will affect your image uh, quality also and affect your uh, observations so now i will be talking about how to configure the telescope for observing um, for observing with ten spec so first in the telescope make sure this uh, in mind it uh, this all the things will be operated by the telescope operator. You have to just make sure and just uh, ask them whether this all these things are kept ready or not. So first, you have to as the spec is selected as, uh, as mounted in the main port or in the main back end. So uh, in the port selection, you have to select it is selected as main port, and then in the access control. Uh, okay, and then in the next, sorry, in the next uh, part, you have to cho choose the pointing model from the, there is a list of pointing model parameter. From that list of pointing model parameters, select the 10 spec 2020 pointing model. That is the latest pointing model that we have developed and which is working very fine. Don't use the other pointing models. And finally, uh, if you have to, um, this focus issue in the adaptive optic system, it is there. That is the uh, range of the focus, but we will uh, suggest that before starting your observation, check the focus each night because it may change, it may vary from the night to night, but more or less it would be, uh, lie somewhere between this wavelength uh, uh, or this range, focus range. And for the imaging mode, uh, you just uh, in the telescope uh, control, as I have uh, shown here. Okay. So in the uh, while taking the imaging mode in the you have to set up the rotator. So in the target control here you set up the rotator. You give in the rotator offset 120 degrees offset and set it. This is done in order to align your field with what you see in Simbad or in the Skyview software. So such that in the image that will generate will not be pointed upwards like that. And for the spectroscopy mode, what you have to do as this is a wide field spectrograph. So there is a somewhat atmospheric dispersion of the uh, source as you uh, in the slit. So if you have to obtain the optimum range, you have to keep the slit in the parallactic angle. This is done by by disabling the rotator by putting selecting by fixing the angle at minus 30 degrees 
this uh, make sure the operator there at the night has kept all these things ready according to your science goal, whether you are doing imaging or doing spectroscopy. So, uh, can I ask a question? Yeah. This highlighted angle will vary uh, with respect to the location of your target and the sky. No? You could fix this. It is fixed. Yeah, yeah. we have checked it. My, my it is fixed. Uh, more or less, you could keep it at minus 30 degrees. But if you have some extended source or if you feel some want special alignment, you don't do that. I will move, I will also explain it again. Means I will come back to it again. So, so last slide one question. Yeah. So if that one two three fourth bullet point imaging. Yes. That one twenty degree thing. If you are doing spectroscopy, that's to be skipped or no? Yes, that's to be skipped. Okay. Yeah. Should I remark from the paralytic angle? Someone asked. So, yeah. the altitude axis, if you are keeping this with parallel, uh, perpendicular to that. Uh -huh. So, for that, there is some uh, offset. So, we put that offset and that is continued for uh, that particular object. Okay. Okay. And uh, um, again, start, um, before beginning your observations, these are the four, um, four temperature leach controller. Uh, showing you the temperatures. These are the four temperatures that you have to note, and that is the uh, optimum operating range of the temperatures. Uh, make sure the temperatures. It will also show up in the GUI also uh, the the radiation scale, spectrograph temperature, and guided temperature, and etc. Uh, and the compressor uh, compressor uh, is there. That should be the optimum pressure range will be between 120 to 150 psi, and also, as there are helium lines are there, uh, just ask the operator that they are not too much twisted because if they break, it means the night is gone. And uh, also, the hard switches there are hard, uh, there are switches at ba the back end mounted at the transpect. Make sure all the all these switches of these hall sensors and motors these are all kept on. So this is how we configure the. It is going forward. Now it's nature. Now I'm doing that. Hmm. Yes, yes, just back. Just yeah, okay. and go on back. Yeah, okay. just I will be Okay, and just one more one step next to it. Yeah. So this is the WTI power cabinet uh, uh, on the WTI network power. So once you have um, ensured that all the switches at the back end. On the uh, are, are kept switched on. Come to this. There is the link. It 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 is always kept open in the uh, in the browser. So make sure all all these uh, a one these switches that a one a two and then a six. Mind it this Ethernet switch and the leg so this should always be kept on because the leg so is the temperature controller. It it controls the temperature and Ethernet is used for the communicating with the transmit from the TCS room. So this should uh, this to B4 and B1. Th those two should be always kept on. And these remaining switches at the start of observations, like the spectro power, the guider power, the hall power, and the red uh, motor power, th those will be those should be switched on. You have to just click on here. Uh, a drop down will come up, and you just click on on and then go here. Confirm actions. It will execute the actions. So, yeah. So once you have uh, switched on all the uh, in the WTA power cabinet, so you have to open. Uh, um, there are uh, these are the several uh, terminal commands which you have to input to start up the transfer GUI. So uh, at presently, what you have from home directory, you have to go to the from to the bin two directory, 
as I have written, you can see. So uh, in the bin2 directory, from there you execute these following commands with as it is at and sequentially maintain the sequence and write as it is, and then so this GUI will come up and along with this display viewer. So so I will yeah so. So I will just explain briefly what these eight commands do. Um, these guider ones just connect the tenspec with the telescope. It um, th those two start talking again, uh, begins to talk, and this temper it maintains the temperature. The this start MS it starts all the initializers, the can mirror and other filters. The and this H two RG and H one RG server this command it activates the spectrograph array and the imager array. And find and this all four commands H2RG, H1, Imager IC, Spectro IC. And finally, the GUI opens the Tenspec GUI that I showed in the next slide. And so, as you said, those command sequence is important. Yeah. It? So, you have to put the H2RG starter earlier than the H1RG. Yes. So, now the this uh, Tenspec uh, GUI will open. And you will see uh, once the temperature is all in the range, as Saurav also told, uh, it, it will be always okay. So, and then at first you have to home all these four parts the cal mirror, the slate wheel, the guider wheel, and also uh, the grating wheel. So, you, uh, that is necessary you know, uh, that because the GUI, GUI or the tensor does not know where it is when you just first started. So, you first home, the, home them, and also you uh, Put in your you put in the in the data here you put the date of observation and we are selecting some means keeping some uh, criteria uh, means for the uh, here you keep the date and here you pro provide the file name there are two chips one chip is used for the spectrum for taking the spectra and another chip is used for imaging the H1 RGR is used for the imaging and the H2 RGR is used for taking the spectra. And also here, what you have to do, you select that in the spectrograph or in the H2RG array, there are two gain modes, the high gain and the low gain mode. So in the, you can just click on here, you will see an option of, by default, it always remains in the high gain. You can just click on to change it on uh, toggle button, high gain and the low gain. So based on your criteria, you can change it. And then you have to select here the readout mode so there are various readout modes for the but the optimum readout mode for the temp spec is the sq or a sample of the ram so if you just click on it in the readout mode in both this guide in a spectrograph or the guider image a drop down will come up from that drop down select sq word it will get selected and also uh, click on this checkbox sif that sif means the safe intermediate files it will also save the intermediate files that will uh, that will generate so now moving on. Okay, uh, so if you are observing faint sources, so then here according means uh, here you keep it as high gain. But if you are observing bright sources, suppose if you are observing very bright sources around four mag or five mag, you keep it at low gain. So. So yes, and that's what I was uh, telling beforehand. So you just select the gain mode here, and uh, you select the uh, the readout mode, and also you just home all these things. After all the things are all successfully home, you will see if uh, one if the green bar will come up and it will show ready. So next, after all the things are successfully home, you put you have to select your slate. If you are doing spectroscopic observations, you just in the slate will click on it. A drop down of the slate available slates will come up. Uh, you select the slate of your choice in which you want to observe. Uh, and in the guider wheel, uh, in the blank, in the uh, in the guider wheel or the in the imager, you select the filter. Before putting the star into the slate, you have to image it and to see the location of it. So you will select preferably you keep it in K band, and you select the grating wheel. The grating one is for the cross dispersed mode, and uh, the grating two is for the prism mode. And this cal mirror, this is one calibration mirror. If you want to observe your uh, telescope targets or the on the on sky object, you have to put cal mirror in out position. If 
and you have to put uh, the calculator in, in position when you are taking the calibration lamps. So, yes. So, now I coming uh, in the second part of the third part of this uh, GUI is the file saving mode. So, this is on the spectrograph save info that you that you were saying the spectrograph save info. So, here you have to write the file name. So, uh, so we have kept one file naming convention and uh, we would be glad that if you just maintain that convention because the pipeline will also work accordingly if you just maintain this file configuration. You write the object name. See here, suppose uh, my object name, uh, my object was HBC 687. So, I wrote that the object name and then the in which mode you are observing. The cross dispersed mode, the cross, it is mentioned as HD. Or if you are observing in prism mode, just write LS in small. And then you, with an underscore, you mention the slit in which slit you are observing. And then the gain mode, and the in which gain mode you are observing. And if you are differing across the slit, so just mention it, whether it is at A position or B position. And accordingly, if you are taking multiple sets of that, put in the number. And then you here in the path where the data is to be saved, you just put in the date of observation where, 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 in which date you are observing, along with your proposal ID. A folder will be created within that directory, and all your data will be saved in that. Yeah, so every time you retype any keyword, so you have to type internal. So yes, that's a, that was I, I was coming to it that. Uh, yeah, just you, uh, if you just have, you modify any of it, just press enter in each of the steps, then only um, the, all the controller and the software will register your commands. So this is the uh, typical spectrum, I uh, mean, if you are ta observe, uh, taking spectrum, you save your file like that. And if you are taking uh, or if you are saving the images, if you also means we would be glad that if you name the files like that, the object name then and then the different positions and uh, the filter in which you are observing and the exposure time and how many sets you are taking and the same thing in the path is the same and also there is these op options if these all data um, gets uh, registered in the fits file also in the header you write the observer name the object you are observing and the comment in the comment preferably your proposal id it will be better yeah. Is there a way because uh, there could be uh, human errors when uh, giving the file? So, is there a way out, for example, uh, extracting this information from the fixed file and so, re regenerating uh, to tune with their uh, data collection pipeline? Is that possible? Or make uh, uh, entire nights uh, in the data being uh, saved in uh, some sequence fashion? Uh, random numbering. So, uh, we'll be glad if some the observer is somewhat careful because. At right now means if the file name is uh, wrong means the file the pipeline will not work. We, we just ask the observer to be careful yeah, in, uh, in but, the but whatever the information given in the file name yeah. uh, it can be expected. Yes, if you just it, yes you can extract it is just a simple uh, write a simple uh, Python program it, it, it can be done. It can be done. Yeah. No, I think the question was the header also eventually the driver knows what is exposure time etc. So whether that information is also that can added. also be edited at the end because no 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 oh, if, so if whether the file name is wrong yeah. and in header the correct information is there so is there a way to check both yeah, okay that is not developed but it can be developed yeah. yes that's what I'm saying if the file name is wrong then at the end you can check the header and correct the file name for the pipeline uh, yeah that then you can read it that so this is how you set up the spectroscopic mode observations. First, you have to select the slate of your choice on that. And then put for the on-sky observations, uh, or sorry, for taking the lamps, you put it in the cal mirror in the in position. And, in the, uh, uh, and then if you want to take the dark frames on the spectroscopic dark frames, you select blank filter in the filter, guider filter width. And, uh, then you take the multiple dark frames and the dark frames will be equal to your the single frame exposure time and for the calibration frames on this slate will uh, the slate will you have to select and the calculator 
will be should be put in the in position and you select uh, you and uh, here in the lamp that i can go back here so here in the part of the gui the calibration lamp files are there you click it it will uh, switch on here for example the neon lamp was switched on so it will glow with a yellow color and uh, the other lamps are switched off you just click on this from uh, on this buttons it will uh, switch on or off accordingly so <coughs> you can select uh, you can observe the calibration lamps like that and you have to wait for some time um, it takes some time to switch the lamps on or off and slightly and the, um, the main important thing from here is that the calibration lamps generally takes around 30 seconds a single exposure of the calibration lamp uh, takes 30 seconds. You can uh, give that. If you give more, more uh, it will get saturated or less, and then the scenario will be less. You won't get it. So, yeah. So, another thing is that all these uh, setting up the, um, on the lamps and other things can be done with these macro commands. Macro commands are the low level some commands. You will see it in the 10 spec GUI here it is under the macros you go to the macro folder and write write some simple uh, commands like this in the next slide is i am doing for the for switching on the lamp and taking the spectra you have you can all uh, write in type in the file name on the give the exposure time set the cal mirror select the gain mode on the select the readout mode all these things can be done by writing a simple macro command that can be done is within uh, there is a macro folder right in that and the file name the extension uh, on the file name should end with this dot psp otherwise the gui will not read it so once it is there you just uh, under the macro section uh, you just click on it on this drop down will show your macro file and you just execute it from here so that lamp commands can be the calibration commands can be executed from here also so once you get this, and this is the sample of the lamp spectra, both the iron lamp and the neon lamp in the cross dispersed mode. Once you, you have taken that, and these are the continuum lamps for the calibration. And uh, these are the iron and neon lamps and the continuum lamp in the prism mode. Yes, now you are uh, setting it up for the uh, for on sky observation. For on sky observations, on uh, that on the first thing what i told is that you have to select the rotator and at minus 30 degrees and keep it there so that the parallactic angle correction is done so and you select the slit of your choice and the main thing is there you for on site observations you put the cal mirror in out position then only the beam from the telescope will enter the can spec uh, grating and other and then you select the uh, for viewing whether on the for putting the star in the slate you have to also image the grating for that you put the any filter of your choice but you can means put k or some other filters and with this um, um keeping the rotator at minus 30 degree what i have to will say that if if for the paint objects very faint objects or if the user is only uh, means uh, concentrating on the NIR, but you don't uh, you don't have to put it at minus one minus thirty degrees. You put it at one twenty degree, and then in the offset, and just as you do in the imaging case, and you can do that in that way that uh, the target will remain in the within the slit for longer time. If you are only uh, uh, means interested in the NIR part of the spectra. Or, I think there are two steps now. One is the disabling the rotator. Yes, that's what is the uh, keeping it at minus 30 degrees. Yes, you have to disable uh, so keeping it at minus 30 degrees, you have to disable the rotator. Yeah, there are two steps. So yes. It looks like uh, okay. disabling the rotator and okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, so you have to disable and uh, you have to put minus 30 degree and disable it to keep it fixed. Yeah. And so you must disable in the first minus 30 and then disable. Disable it in the second stage. Okay, that's true. yeah. So for the paint objects, you can do that. And if the user wants some special alignment, some maybe the AGN guys and other people, they want some special alignment along their 
across the sky then you can also keep it you uh, tell the user uh, tell the operator there to keep align the slit like accordingly and then you and then you point you tell the operator there at the tcs and your target coordinate to point it and then you select the gain mode accordingly and uh, of and you nod the telescope or move the telescope such that your object comes within the slit and then you take spectra and here is the offset calculator i um, mean so we are developing the guiding on board guide on the guide uh, in that on that aspect gui so, so it is still not developed so in the meantime we have developed one offset calculator so with it you can calculate if you can calculate the offsets in arc second uh, um, it requires to move the uh, telescope to move the object within the slit so here is the, here is the initial positions as you can see yeah, since the rotator is disabled, yeah. so offset in different directions are different. So you need some calculator to like give offset command to the telescope. So, so this kind of call. so initially, once you just uh, move, uh, point the telescope and towards your target and take one test image to see your position, uh, to see your target position uh, at, in the in the display viewer. The display viewer will uh, show the coordinates. Of your of your target and also the location of the slit. So you note down that target position. You just put it in here, and this is the destination position. So in the if you are keeping it in the A B data mode, so the preferred positions A and B positions are around 215 228, the A position and 255 228 pixels. So that keep this as fixed. Uh, means if you are observing in the A or B position. And you just put in the position of your target, initial target, um, when you image it, and then ask the it, it is this chart is there within the ten spec PC, and you ask the operator the rotator demand angle. You just update it here, so at the end it will calculate the offsets that will be required to move the telescope. Uh, you have to give the telescope uh, so that the target moves onto the slit. So these values you get, you just uh, tell the operator. So move the telescope by this giving this offset. So then it will. So I mean, it may happen that uh, in one iteration it will not go. It, it may take around one or two iterations so that the target reaches the slit. Where is it located? So we have kept it in the ten spec PC. The ten spec PC. It is, I think it's in the desktop. It's SLS right. So it's How effective our be? So for each uh, means once you get an idea which calculates the uh, note down the positions of A and B, you note it down. More or less it comes. You have, don't have to do or re repeatedly if you have to take multiple A and B data position. It comes around that value. And only what is separation? So the one is so, uh, the center of the slate. Yes. So yeah, um, we generally keep the slate um, object at the five or second uh, along the slate. And at 15 half seconds. So this is 20 half seconds so yeah. from the edge, 5 half seconds, and then 10 seconds. So, so five, like five half seconds from the edge. Five, put, yeah. That is the A position, and then you move by 10 half seconds. That is a B position. So, from the other end. Yes, yes. Symmetrically from the two edges. Yes, yes, yes. I think uh, I was thinking, like, uh, if, you, if you align the slit at the start initially, at the center optical axis and take beta one five half second left side so, and five half second right, probably this offset requirement will be reduced. So I was thinking that yeah, the this if fortunately for this ten spec, the optical center <coughs> lies in the A position. Oh that's good. <laughs> so it's not exactly center of the array, it's on the A position of the slide. That's so good. that's why we have generated 20 model also on the A position. Yeah, that's okay. So uh, this is the sensitivity of uh, sensitivity curve uh, of the tensway. Uh, Saurabh has also to, uh, talked about it. I'll just uh, skip it. I mean, so these are the required exposure times that you need to achieve uh, to observe the faint sources and. Uh,
and the targets so this is what the what i have to uh, i will be showing so initially once you arrange the slit and you give in one test frame you just note down the position suppose that your object is somewhere here this is your object and you have to put it in the object in the slit like this using that offset calculator you can put that in the slit after you have put it there you can take exposures so the calculator you need to give the position yeah. of the green box yeah 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 you just uh, there uh, you move this cursor here okay. so in the display viewer at the top here the coordinates will be shown okay. so just note that down and put it in that offset calculator okay. so and ask the operator what is the rotator demand angle so that rotator demand angle is also the input parameter so the, with these two input parameters it will calculate the offset and then you can take uh, move the object in the slit okay. And you can you can also observe it in this A B dither positions that what I was saying. These are the two locations uh, in the A B dither position. And another thing to note that if you are if your sources are faint, if and this is moderate bright or bright sources, you can do A B dither position. But if your sources are faint, you can also keep the source at the center of the slit and you keep on observing. Because on the and that to give longer exposures. Well, suppose if your sources are around the K band 14 minute or something, you you have to give around five minute or five point five minute exposure. You keep it in the center of the slit and you keep on taking multiple frames. And uh, in the meantime, yeah, but you cannot see the source. No, no, you can simultaneously do, uh, check the position of the source in the slit also by taking the spectra. Both the chips are there are two chips, one for imaging okay. and one for spectra. Okay. Yeah. So, so in this case, what is the slit width and what is the? So this is this uh, 20 arc second slit of, of uh, 1.5 arc second. So, so that's what, on the, what I was saying that for the faint sources, you can keep the source in the center position and you can for and give around five minute exposure and take the one multiple exposure and in between you check whether your target is within the slit and align it means adjust the uh, telescope so that it comes back to the slit and keep on giving exposures so do you also have some way to decide like uh, what is the piece of toughness and accordingly in the db there are some visually in the in the in the display viewer means before putting the star in the slit there is an option of checking the piece of so you can check that from there also on to check whether the object is focused or not, or you have to adjust the focus. No, adjusting focus is one thing. No, That's for the checking the PSF also the, in the display viewer, there is a, some uh, option is there. So I haven't shown that, but I will. No, no, it's okay. Yeah, this is there. This is it. You can see the PSF. Yeah. So in DV small box you can see the PSM. so there is an option to check the piece of also in the okay. so image and piece of both you can check can you just If you are observing in the whole wavelength range, right? When you put the slit uh, camera, that should be like one filter, right? Filter. No, no, no. You can get the optical as well as the yeah. layer. Yeah. You put a blank or yeah, you are you can put um, by taking the spectra in the filter field, you can keep any of the filters that won't affect the means the your spectral range. So you keep changing it and so means uh just it is keeping any of the filter of your choice and uh, just to be check whether your ta uh, uh, your target is within the slit or not that is the purpose for that guider during that time in your card but if it's in the, the case in the corner uh, the optical part will not be exactly same for so uh, but if it, that's what i said that if you keep um, the rotator fixed uh, at minus 30 degree and disable it then it is there at the parallactic angle. So in more or less, if you are uh, means observe seeing that the star is in with the visual, uh, seeing the uh, star with the K band and uh, aligning it with the slit, it won't matter 
and the bluer bands or such. Yeah. Yeah. So, hi. Yeah. So, if you have an extended source, uh, the A B B dithering will be possible. Uh, no, no, no. I was coming to that. If your source is extended, the best way is to take uh, your source spectra and then move the so uh, source out of the slit and take sky. Or in any ways, if you uh, means, but I would have, uh, I will, I was going to that in the pipeline. There is a, it, it don't matter if you want take sky because in the in the pipeline it interpolates the sky from the edges of the slit and uh, you, you you can also keep on the object at the center of the slit and take keep on taking multiple spectra. It don't affect. Yeah. So so, uh, so just one yeah. Uh, T is outside. So feel free when you want to take it. Okay. Maybe after this spectroscopy mode observation, I will post. Okay, I will just make it up. Keep it on the website. Okay. And just make some correction with this and okay. some steps. So the, in the so after you just keep in all the put in all the variables and set all the variables you take expose it by giving the expo setting up the exposure time here and just click on go so this spectra will come up and here you can see the spectra and the psf is also there so yes and this is one sample image in the ab dither position as you can see this uh, skype part that is dominant in the k band and the other band it is being subtracted out you can see so maybe i will pause here and uh, for the imaging observation let's make up the setting
हेलो सो इन सो इन द देवस्थल इन द देवस्थल ऑब्जर्वेटरी द नाइट स्के ब्राइटनेस इन द इनर ईयर बैंड्स इज दिस एज यू कैन सी इट्स अराउंड 16 मैग इन जे बैंड एंड इट इज इट बिकम्स ब्राइटर इन द के बैंड एंड इवन ब्राइटर इन द इनवियर बैंड्स सो एंड कंपेयरिंग यू कैन जस्ट सी दिस इज जस्ट अ कंपैरिजन इट इज कंपैरेबल टू द अदर बेस्ट ऑब्जर्विंग साइट्स दैट वी हैव वर्ल्ड वाइड Oh, yeah. Uh, so to begin, uh, so for the uh, imaging mode observations, so what you have to do, uh, you have to first uh, keep the, you have to select mirror in the slit wheel. So you have to uh, in the slit wheel there is a drop down of the list of slits, and also there is one option of putting mirror while doing the imaging. So select mirror from there. and uh, for the, and uh, while you are taking the dart that i have mentioned uh, you put the calmira back in in position that will cut off the telescope beam means the uh, on sky beam coming within the time spec so put it in the in position and then all in the guider filter will select blank filter so there will be no filter in the um, in the filter wheel also and then you take uh, uh, dart frames so the dart frame as uh, here i supposed uh, that i have kept it uh, for an example 20 second keeping in mind that my single exposure frame source exposure frame was of 20 second that dart frame will always be equal to the exposure time of your single exposure uh, frame uh, source exposure so for flat frames it is similar just you have to put the cal mirror in out position and in which of the banks you are observing keep that frame on uh, filter Uh, here in the filter wheel, and as in the case of optical, as you take flat frames by moving the telescope to some, uh, uh, moving the telescope to different parts of the sky, so you take in a similar way. So the dark frames, yes. So uh, it's uh, very difficult. Uh, suppose you are uh, having object exposures of different uh, seconds, like. Ten second, fifteen. Yeah, dark frame. Uh, so can this be added to uh, make a dark frame of whatever exposure you want? Actually, we are not in white. Uh, no, but actually, uh, uh, can you just do that again? I want to take ten second dark. Okay. I want to create let's say fifty second dark. Okay. So I just add this mm. this exposure five times. No, no, no. Five. Uh, no, because some sometimes the dark frame is not uh, somewhat linear. Linear. It can change also. Do you have some plots? I yeah, think so. Sort of, so does. Oh, yeah. So this is while for uh, setting up the imaging mode observations. So here, uh, as I said, uh, similar to the previous cases, uh, in the slit will you select the mirror, and then put the calibrator in the out position. And uh, this is what for aligning what you see in the your target frame in the Simba the sky view, uh, and what you see in the what will you observe in the display viewer, tensile display viewer. Uh, if you just have to align that for that, you in the rotator. You just put in in the rotator offset 120 degrees, so that will align your frame with not pointing upwards, and uh, then you just uh, point towards the target. You just tell the operator your you know, the coordinates of your target, and then you just uh, move the telescope slightly or, or accordingly such that it um, your target comes within the center of the, the field of view, and then you take science telescope or uh, sorry science frames by differing or nodding the telescope. So I will be, and this is what the field of view and the blade scale of the uh, ten spec, and I will be talking something about this uh, dithering. So dithering is uh, suppose th and this center one is my target. So what you can do, you can uh, download the your target or the archive image from this uh, NASA sky view image. The link I have given here. So the, you can, as the field of view is around uh, one arc minute. So you, uh, it is better you can you download a two arc minute field of view from there, and uh, centering your target. Suppose this is the, on the center of your target. You just draw a box of this 20 arc second size, and what you have to do. You just calculate the edge, the coordinates of the edge of this box, and what you have to tell the tele on um, by uh, and by differing what you have to do, you have to move the uh, 
on telescope to these positions such that the object moves uh, slightly within the field of view and it does not go out of the field of view. So in that way, you take um, give multiple exposures or exposure frames, like in the K band, you give 20 seconds. For J and H bands, you can go up to 50 seconds. You take multiple se sets. And after, um, during processing, you align them, generate the sky, subtract the sky from that, align it, and then combine to get your process frame of the total exposure time. Uh, actually, man, this is five point ether. This you take the edges, four edges, calculate this center, and also you have uh, your source is centered here. So you take one ether is also here. This is five point. Okay. So five point ether is okay. So one thing is that you have to keep in mind while dithering on the effective field of view, it gets decreased because while aligning, you know, the edges are cut off. Yeah, so uh, this 20 arc second shift in the between the tether positions. Mm -hmm. So it is the most optimal or you can go down uh, because like I said, you make when uh, you align. If, suppose if some uh, very bright source is there, if it makes some small box, so if it is not, so, uh, if you don't move the telescope somewhat, so even if you go ahead, then the frames will not be aligned properly or the, you won't get a good sky frame to subtract out. So maybe 20 arc second, uh, we have found that 20 arc second is optimal. So these are what the sensitivity curves. Uh, I think he has uh, sort of spoke about it very brief in detail. And just uh, so this is the brief image processing steps. Uh, what, what you have to do is you have to take the dark frames. You have to generate the sky frame by median combining all the different frames, and then subtract it from individual dark subtracted frames, and then you flat fill the frames accordingly as you do in the optical and then align the images and then combine the aligned images to get your science image and you can proceed as accordingly and this is one uh, sample image from uh, Tanspec and in comparison with two masks so those black patches are after sky protection it comes like that or those black on the right side image. Okay, uh, this one. Yeah, this is due to saturation. The black patches in between. Yes, yes. Uh, this is a mosaic image. Uh, so when they have um, combined the mosaic image, so these are the uh, edges of the slit. It has rotated like that. That's no, no, no. Those black, black, black patches. Okay, okay. Yeah, that is because of the sky substraction part. Some residuals have been there. So uh, again, the same question, like if you are covering uh, the target in excess more than two pointings or four, five pointings, then what uh, should be the optimal overlap between them so that you don't miss, uh, because it's a, like the transpec view is like this one. Yeah. So what should be the optimal overlapping between the two uh, positions or pointings? So that's what I said, in, in the dithers you can keep it in uh, 20 or second and you just generate a mosaic, maybe the overlapping region or maybe keep it around uh, 10 to 15 half second, the overlapping between the two positions, uh, two different ether positions. Because we don't want to get set. Yes. Between two points. Yes, yes. Right. Maybe it depended on the source, like if I'm an extended source, there isn't an easy ether position which will give you a median which has cancelled out everything. So at that point, the best thing is to look somewhere nearby else, far away, and take a sky separately from the ether. So, it, so this is a classic example when you are too crowded, there is no number of ethering which will let you average out everything. So that way you may better go somewhere else and take sky. So and finally, at the end of the observations, while you um, means after you have completed your nightly observations, uh, you have to just home in again. You put the camera in, in position. And, uh, and you just close the Tanspec software, switch off all the hard switches, and also in the WTI cabinet. And finally, before coming back from that observatory, fill in the nightly log. And uh, before also leaving, you check the temperatures and all these things. And uh, okay, I'm done. So. Can you go to the slides back? Uh, I had a, where you compared the J sky with Monarchy? Uh, yeah. Uh, it seems uh, we are as dark as Monarchy at J band, right? Yes. Can you compare Henley? Uh, 
no. And uh, I also wanted to see the uh, some of the information uh, actually uh, from the telescope should come in the, uh, the spits file of Tanis. Yeah, in that Tanis spits file uh, header, you get the coordinates. You have the header right now. Can no, you display? No, I don't yeah. have it now. Yeah, so can. in the TCS header, what you will get, you will get all the four temperatures of all the four A, B, C days. Okay. Then uh, the gain mode. The, the continuum lamps, which the continuum lamps you are using, then the, the information, the RA information of your target, it is there, it is put, uh, put in there. And also, yeah, the exposure time, the most important thing, the exposure time, the number of indicators. So rotator, rotator, uh, rotator value is there. You can, keep, you can take that also. So it automatically comes from the yeah that is what the first command that i showed the set of nine commands the first command that uh, start guider it does it just connects that end step with the telescope tcs so then they both begin to speak to each other and it takes the information it asks the tcs provide me this information i have to write it it writes it to the first slide later so i think most of the things are covered the only thing remains is the m2 focus that that uh, doesn't come and maybe some weather parameter sometimes when maybe the weather parameter is okay because you only open the dome when the weather conditions is favorable otherwise it's no point right uh, uh no weather parameter okay no you can't go back and correlate with the sky brightness or something okay yeah, yeah actually data quality you want to yeah. correlate. correlate uh uh then it is important to have uh, weather parameter. I think telescope also gives some some temperature uh, values. And, and uh, that is not yeah, yeah. Maybe I think it will be it will be important to have <laughs> so yeah. I am done here. If you have some questions, the header which is guessed in the telescope. That is the one the telescope is right now pointing after incorporating the offset one. Yeah, the, and there are four uh, related to this, there are four entries in the coordinates of your target, and also there is offsets. It is separately provided in the header. So you will also get to see uh, how much offset is there uh, you have provided to observe the target. It is as TCS RA, TCS tech, TCS offset array, TCS offset tech, like that. Uh, I have a question. I have some uh, like paint source. So instead of taking it as an A B position, uh, as you suggested that I can take it at in the center of the slip and uh, just not to take the uh, like uh, uh, like for the sky uh, subject uh, subjection kind of thing. Yeah. So I should uh, only take uh, at the center of the slit only. Or yeah. Okay. 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 Put the object, uh, put your target at the center of the slit and uh, keep on repeating the set of exposures. Okay. Because it is uh, in the pipeline, there is main speed interpolates the sky from the slits. And one thing just uh, uh, on, I'd like to add on to that means while taking the spectra, if you want a very good wavelength calibration, immediately observe the calibration lamps just after completing the observation. If you want a very good wavelength calibration from the spectra after each source, it's like uh, yes, um, for a very fine. Correction for system like that. So, next, uh, shall we move on to that hands on? Close. Thank you. 
What is this? So, uh, so this is the ten spec G, right? You are saying. So here, the this is the G U A part, and uh, at the. At the back, these are the eight terminal um, terminals where you provide the terminal commands. And those all the commands that I have showed you that from start at uh, guided to dv minus l. So you put in here. So maybe just. Thank you. 
So this uh, the procedure to start up the time spec is as I will be showing you. It is in local PC or remotely connecting? Remotely connecting. Via a team view. So in this way, the GU will start. And uh, first, the, in the foremost thing, what you have to do, you have to home in all the all this. <clears throat> all mechanism you have to move so that they will know their like initial position. I just did one mistake. It is going to the J, but you have to do home. And just one takeaway here: if all the hard switches that I showed, if it is not switched on. Even if you change it here to the home position, it will show unknown. So that is one thing uh, you can check it with like that also, whether confirm whether that switch, hard switches are switched on or not. And then you just put in today's state here, our folder will be created. Is it not possible to put homing in initialization? Huh? Homing in initialization itself. <coughs> The coming like only once in a while you have to do because just UI will be on for like all season. If something happens, there is some issue, then you have to restart. Because homing will move the oh. No, so at least initial they would yeah, have. So we are avoiding that because that's why there is like problem with the existing view. Yeah, mind it, you just always press enter here in whatever changes, otherwise it won't register. We will have to follow the sequence while while Yeah, it's, it's better to follow the sequence. Yeah. Sequence also and all four at a time don't do that because it will require a lot of time. So 
one or two mechanism you do, and then it will when it's ready then go for another. So if you keep a file name blank and file number running, you don't do. You don't do. Then, so suppose I am taking an argon lamp spectra. Uh, the name the files like this argon lamp. <coughs> then the mode in which you are taking cross dispersed. Then the slit size and the gain like this. Now you, what you have to do, you just put the cal mirror in in position while taking the calibration lamps. Select the slit uh, of your choice here, the one half second slit. It it is okay. You can keep anything here in the guider wheel while taking the lamp, and then you select grating one for cross dispersed mode. Now what you have to do, you see. Here is the gain mode. You can toggle between the gain modes just by clicking on it. It will change from low high gain to low gain and vice versa just by a single click. You just put in your exposure tank, single frame exposure tank here. Check it here. And so <clears throat> what it do? Like if you give uh, like 50 second or 60 second exposure, so for for S2 RZ, it will take 5.2 seconds to read out the frame so it will divide that exposure in by 5.23 and then it will take that much and the hours so wait for some time and until and unless it is ready once it is ready it will buy the green bar and also it will be written ready so now you can begin and now what you have to do you just click on this argon or any of the uh, calibration lamps like this argon you just click on it and wait for some time it will turn on and now you can go for exposure uh, you just click on this and it will start taking the exposure frames. After turning to neon or other lamp, how long should it wait? One, two, two, three seconds. How long? What? But like after turning to how long should it wait before taking the picture of neon or other lamp? You can take out the five or six seconds. Yeah, but it won't affect the calibration. Sometimes, yeah. yeah, sometimes it uh, is due to the homing issues. You click on and it doesn't turn on. So that's why homing is important. Uh, yeah. about the time after the neon, neon to be fully brightened. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But you are taking like 25 yeah. seconds exposure. Yeah. Okay. Like last time when I was looking for this uh, system, the viewer has asked me to wait for some minutes while I waited for that. He didn't find the exposure. Yeah, I have not <laughs> Yes, sir. I have a question like what is the use of those intermediate files? Like uh, generally we use only yeah, this images. sample of the RAM images. So if this is from cumulative readout. Read so one frame and then it will cumulatively read out another frame. Mm -hmm. And then fit a scope on that community. So it's cons per second. So this dot z file is cons per second. So it's better because there's less noise in there. You can do single imaging also. But usually we do in infrared is better to do sample of the range. Mm -hmm. Saturation also is handled by the other. Yeah. Yeah. Saturation, yeah. cosmic, something. You wait for some time, the files will come up here. You see here yeah, that only if you save the sample of the and then we update the file by next one group feature. If you want to go back and apply those this old data, you need those SIFs. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to recover. So that is the raw data. Yeah. So raw data, yeah. Percent data. So, so these, are, these are the intermediate files, as you see, have been generated. What your main focus is this z.fix, that is your output file. You just uh, load it here. Q 
here you can see this is the sample lens spectra just in case. So, Here you can see uh, the sample lens spectra, and this way you can get the thing. Yeah, we have very less time, so only I think like this is all like demo for the sample how to take sample spectra. So imaging and spectroscopy bit time you learn. So what like we have only 20, 30 minutes because by 15 we have to leave. So Arpan, maybe you like demo is you want to show? Uh, maybe I can try. Hmm. So if you have any query about observation, please go ahead. This UI is very simple. So for display, we use. Huh? For the beginners, uh, what do you recommend? Like how do we learn? Or, like, do we explain everything that we don't have a hands-on experience? So this, yeah, hands-on experience you don't have, but the manuals are there. And so what do you say? Like we continue this or like? No, no. So we have for observation, we have uh, generated on manual. How to do observation is there in the uh, areas website. So that you people can use. And you, you can contact us also before your observation. So what the policy here in the areas is that if newcomer is there, is coming, he has to spend at least a couple of nights before his own observation. So that he has experience and then he can do observation. So, so for outside people also, if it's practical, you come one or two days before and you spend one night before and then you will have some experience, then next night it will be easier because there are a lot of overheads in, in infrared imaging. So if you are new and then overheads are high, so it's not very efficient way to do observation. So it's better to come one or two nights before, then it will be easier. Yeah, at least one night, Yeah, we would recommend that uh, you come. Is get familiar with even telescope operation and all that. But I think uh, users should know that uh, scientific assistants also know uh, to a certain yeah. extent yeah. this instrument operation. Mm -hmm. But instrument operation is also equally uh, complex as the telescope operation. Mm -hmm. The telescope operation, they have got a training. So that's not a problem. But still, the data you are getting, you should uh, ensure yourself, that is, uh, users, that you are getting good yeah. quality data. Mm -hmm. Operators are good for like switching on and outing and just like uh, initial setup. But exposure time, how to put grid, where to blow, put SR in the grid. So this kind of information like of observers have to use. With time, I think these operators will have experience, but now this is the so this uh, low resolution uh, uh, arc spectra. Yeah. Uh, this we can keep it. I mean, uh, is it necessary for every user to take maybe one season? You can keep it and take from there, or yeah, it's uh, do you expect any change like every uh, arc spectra? Uh, arc spectra. No. I mean, one time in different state. Uh, mm -hmm. yes. Flexor and can... like flexor issues. If it's not there, this I think it will be okay. Maybe high so, resolution mode uh, people may worry about yeah, from, yeah. Uh, some lambda lambda uh, yeah. elevation. I think uh, half of you have experience already doing all the reason. So from next year, uh, last two years, uh, like we have done a lot of service mode observations with some close collaborators and others. So we are expecting from next year, you will come and spend more time here. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> that software has been written by 
This is written by Sukriyo. Is this the GY in the same way? GY by this IRSF group. In Monokia, there is a Monokia So there is one that is in the CV. I mean, not the GI part. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, no, I'm no, talking no, about the entire operation. No, that is kind of, it, it has a lot of things. Oh, so you see exactly the sort of all the Java so this ten cell is like software is written by Java from Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a program that is written by so uh, this pipeline, yeah, uh, for example, it's just for one year. Somebody wants to explore. Joe has started. Maybe Joe can answer this. Uh, if someone wants to experience hey, Joe, so his query uh, on, on this pipeline. Pipeline. Uh, suppose someone wants to experience this step by step. Yes, so not having much data. A few hours of optimization. 11 okay. so, so there is key documents so which document and they are going to follow step yeah so that's what this tutorial they provided a like a step by step procedure which is some data it will be very similar to the you just follow that by uh, using you are basically using either uh, no, it's only Python. There is no Python. So Python uh, uh, things uh, you can provide that individual also in the script of pipeline, putting everything in the pipeline. Separately, also someone wants to do that. Yeah. 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 Everything in public will also check any function they want. The, okay. With the Python, is released at the public Python. Mm -hmm. So, you so in this in, everybody is uh, seeing the screen yes okay so uh, this is the demo data which you have got so what you have to do uh, so this is that uh, 2021 08 15 is your demo data that you have got right so i have just created one uh, means python environment for reducing that inspect data you can just create increase the font size font size can you increase Terminal, terminal, yeah, control plus, 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 so first, what you have to do, you have to only oh, reducing this data. Uh, uh, of this uh, object, keep a 14, 431. Uh, yes, control A. Yes. Okay. So this is the data which you have seen. So what you have first, what you have to uh, run, you have to run as you can see means just let us uh, run the pipeline uh, means simultaneously. I will also write uh, running it from here, looking at the guidelines. Uh, let us do that, uh, do it like that. So the first and foremost command to uh, thing what you have to do, you have to rename the uh, uh, configuration file. You you will see here uh, there. This is the basic con configuration file. 
that you have download, uh, downloaded, you rename it as with the object name. As I am, uh, in, as I am uh, uh, showing you the reduction for this object is 14, 14, 31, 41. You just rename the file name accordingly. And then in the next step, what you do, you, uh, you just run this command. This pi xd spec and with the configuration file in the mother ten spec directory. So once you run it, it will come in. Uh, the, um, the first thing will come up like this, and then you just hit enter. So it will show, uh, uh, as I have run it previously, it will show the previously finished steps. For the first time beginners, it will come. But in the subsequent steps, uh, this will come. You just hit Y and then proceed further. So these are the steps that the pipeline performs. First, it performs, uh, it generates the log of the fits files. So what you, will, what you have to run for this pipeline at presently, you have to run it in two steps. First, you generate this log of uh, this observation log, and then run the command again, and you perform these steps from one to six. So here, what will be we will be entering zero and then enter. And you have to select the directory from here. So in this case, what you we will select, we will select the directory in which we want to perform. So this is we. So it will show that the log file has been created and uh, you can go back to your home directory and you will check. Uh, this one log file has been generated. So this is the log file, it con uh, contains all the objects it is there and the object name, the exposure time, the filters and the gratings and in which CalMirror position and slits and all these things, the information is there and the date of observations. So next we will move on to the next step. As you will see in the next step, what you have to do, you have to run this command pi hd spec again and to select the steps from here. Sorry, just one quick comment. So if you think something is wrong, so that observation log shows everything from the header. If you think something is wrong in the data file, we are don't only change the file. This text file is where you edit. You are free to edit and correct and fix your data so that the rest of the Python will only read this data file for the process. So there was a question earlier on what if your file name is wrong or the header information is wrong. This is the place you can fix and then the rest of the Python should not care. So next, what you have to uh, do, you have to run this pi hd spec uh, along with that uh, config file again. And uh, you have to run, now you have to run the steps from one to six. So you have, you can just put all the uh, numbers here from one to six on the steps um, by just pressing and giving one gap space character and then enter okay sorry In anytime you want to quit you just uh, press control c it will quit so now it will ask again the date for it so you can just select it again or by default it uh, takes up the last date you just put in here and now it will ask the frames in which, um, which you want to reduce. It will ask for the frames. So what do you do here? Uh, as you can see in the pipeline in the uh, documentation file, you have to uh, put it in this format, like dot slash the object name, then dot slash. Oh, sorry, sorry, uh, dot star, yeah. So, so here, so here you can see the as the object name is here dot star hip the object name then dot star put in like that. Here. Enter. Now in the next step it will ask for the continuum files. 
So what you, you will see in your file here, there is the list of the continuum files is, is there. This is, uh, you have to enter it in the similar way. And also you have to select the region of in the continuum file, which it will take in to, uh, to generate or uh, to continuum normalize your spectra. So like this, similar way, this file and seven contribute uh, tells that box size from where it will take in to normal uh, for continuum normalization. So write it like that. You just be careful here. One thing I want to I want to mention: you write the file name as it is, means uh, or uh, as it is there in your fold, folder here, or the format we are telling. Otherwise, it won't list up all the files. So once you have done that, you just proceed. Now it will come to the argon lamp. So here you will see just in the data file we have provided, and there are argon lamps are wrongly. Either uh, normally you will just write dot star argon lamp dot star and then write zero zero so that it selects the whole region of the argon file for wavelength calibration. But here in the data, we are sorry that on the file argon names file names are written as ARAMP. So we'll be writing that. That that was what I am saying. That here the our argon files are wrongly written. That's why we are. Otherwise, normally write it as argon lamp, AR lamp. Actually, one file is AR AMP yeah. and another file is AR. Yeah, use that AR AMP file. There is another file AR No, use that AR AMP file actually. <coughs> so now it will ask for the neon lamp. And here also you have to select the sections. It is 13, 13, you can see. So here it, it, it will come the list of the files, the how it is done. So if you have not done it correctly, the this here the file list will won't come. I just made um, that is what um, that is what I, we are saying that if you don't make the means name the file names accordingly the convention that we are saying it won't register here so one thing is that you have to quit and then start again by renaming the files or either you have to put it here manually it is and the yeah i mean one other thing is that like you might have no those no regular expression but yes and there, there is actually a regular expression to search for a file name so if you know regular expression it doesn't really matter what you name because regular expressions are pure complete system. So you can actually come up with a regular expression which will match your whatever file name you gave. But that is too much work. So that is why we recommend you to just follow the convention file name so that you can just follow a simple regular expression. If you don't follow it, I'm just so one quick question. Why yeah. is zero space zero? Uh, it, it actually is. It is a starting file number and the ending file number. Yeah. So if you let's say you have an observation yeah. and you want to use only the argon lamp which is observed right next to your mm -hmm. target source. So there you give the starting number with your so that you bracket the argon lamps that you want to use for. So that is mainly to sub-select the specific argon that you took. You might have taken 10 argon lamps, but you want to use one particular set for one particular. My argon. question is why add twice? The start and the end. But you, you can only take one argon lamp at a time, right? No, you can have three argon lamps and you want to say like, I want to use the argon lamp starting at file number five to file number 10, for example, but not argon lamp starting at file number five. So you give like five and 10 as your start and end point. That gives an error actually in the file time. That shouldn't be created an error. So save it. Next, it will come up all the lamp list for the calibration. Here, if you see, as you have entered it correctly, uh, it has listed all the files. So if you check it here, all the file names are correct, and you just move on to the next step. So here, all the argon lamp and the neon lamps are listed. You just move on, 
and now you, you enter the directories here we visually inspect all the files you enter you just uh, as default the file name is registered the folder it has to go you just press enter so it will show up all the frames of your target here so just press q and here if you want to accept it um, press double a or r to reject it's self explanatory written there so the next frame will come up so and this is what the combining as we have taken it in the ab differ mode so in which pairs it will combine and then subtract and perform the observation it is there if you if there is no if you have taken in only single differ mode you don't have to the spaces are there for separating the differ modes if there is no differ mode you don't have to put in space So the Python will automatically recognize which are the different frames, but if you think it made a mistake, this is the place where you can manually. So now you will see the continuum frames, and that has been selected. So here, on the only uh, default, you have to accept all the files. And the lamp files also come up sequentially. So now you won't have to do anything. Now the pipeline will perform all the steps. Uh, it may take some time depending upon your system. Yes. So the inspection is really important, especially if there's a bad continuum frame or a bad argon lab. You don't want it to go to the pipeline. So this will be the place. So once you reduce it, but next time when you're re-reducing, you can probably just go on putting AA in the render enter. But first time, make sure that you actually initially inspect the data and they are good before just accepting the data. So if there is something wrong, then uh, how can we uh, do it manually? How can we insert it manually and uh, insert it manually? And so those fix files you can always open yourself in a DSN if you want more flexibility in inspecting the file because this one just shows a display of the image mm -hmm. and you reject it. But the hope is that you have something else to replace it. You have at least three argon labs. Maybe the first one does not have like, but the second two frame map in a like this. Okay. So it will automatically inform me the rest. You can check it in so this uh, lamp vector uh, into V A. So they are lying at the same pixel all the time. So they change. If there is, I mean, it depends. Like if somebody has turned the rotator, then the instrument finds a pen slightly shifted. Otherwise, it should not. So you are uh, recognizing those lamp uh, profile and tracing it, right? Yeah. yeah. And accepting. Right. So based on the where the star falls. Okay. Based on that, we decide which part of the lamp. Yeah, here you put in your the output file name. You put in here. So this is your the median flat corrected, continuum corrected, cosmically corrected image. Uh, it is displayed. And here the pairs to process. So as we have taken it in the AB differ mode, we will write it as AB B. So it will perform on A minus B and uh, and calibrate and then again also B minus and add up all the so now this one will come up and just ignore, quit it, just quit on the following steps, and we are done. Almost there in the lamp calibration. So and these are the some or slate uh, spectras um, images. Uh, right. Those yeah. are the argon lamps which it automatically try to identify and match based on a template which is already there in the database. So if you suspect something is wrong in the random calibration, those plots are worth it first. Whether it was mad, there's a green line and a black line, which is basically matched out of each other. Then you know that 
it identifies the other lines correctly from what it has in the database that it is more limited by correctly. So once you have finished your comments running the steps, you just move on to this folder. This folder is automatically created. This my template reduction. In that, you will get the data in this directory. The date of your directory is arranged like that. So this uh, if creating one a minus b dot ms wlc dot final dot avg fits is your output file. This last one that I'm creating one a minus b dot ms dot wlc dot final dot avg dot fits. That is your output file. And what are other files? So those are other calibration files and the intermediate files that those are generated and, and also the solution wavelength solution files are also there. Does this include cross calibration also? No, no, the wavelength calibration. This is the, uh, uh, the version one. Will you incorporate other things in the subsequent so, so far it's up to wavelength calibration? Yeah. So this fits file contains uh, pixel versus counts or everything versus counts both. So one part it contains the flux and arbitrary flux scale and the wavelength information. Can you plot? Just can you yeah. just show the this is one D fits right? Uh, no, it is not typical of the one D file that you generate and get using uh, IRF. Okay, it needs some program. Uh, so. Okay. Okay. Uh, I just uh, I will just uh, show you the continuum normalized spectra, the output spectra that you will be seeing here. So. Select the file names. So, uh, if um, uh, you will see the wavelength calibrated part here, the different orders. So, as it is a D0 type star, uh, you won't see many of the features. You will see only some hydrogen, small hydrogen absorption lines. You will see. Plotting, you are providing pipeline. No, no, no. This is some other code. That's why you have to share that. Okay. Yeah, and in the document file that we have provided uh, with the demo data, it contains the instruction how to plot the file. Okay. 
I have just uh, written that. So I'm just uh, sorry to everyone that I just uh, means as the time is less, I haven't selected the continuum regions nicely. So this continuum normalization is not correct. So you have to just adjust the edges of the continuum to select the good part and continuum normalize. Yeah, it is done. So if you have any query, please. So up to all this. It was a bit too far and very first. Very first. <laughs> <laughs> so did you able to do like some test of that? Yes. Huh? Yes. Yes. So See, uh, there is one bus at five fifteen and one at six o'clock. So those who wants like to do slowly, Arpan is here. So uh, people, like half of you can go to the bus, but those who want to learn more, we can redo this whole. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs>